Wow. <laughs> hello, hello. Hello, ladies. Welcome. Welcome to Weeds Heal. As everyone's filtering in, we want to invite you to find the chat bar. Go ahead and hit the chat and go ahead and let us know where you're calling in from today. And let us know what your favorite weed is, because we're going to be talking about weeds tonight. Oh, not a Karen. Looking, I'm looking divine. That is so nice. <laughs> Calling in from Madison, favorite dandelion. All right, Stacy, that's appropriate. Uh, bone set, that's fun. Nettles, I love nettles. Christy from Grand Rapids. I'm from Michigan too. Christy, plantain, love plantain. Chickweed, dandelions. Jesus. Nettles. Linda likes whatever weed she's sitting with in the moment. Lamb's quarters, violets, kind of love those beauties. Wood sorrel, another lovely one. Sweet Sicily. All right, all right. We are so happy that you've all joined us here tonight. Um, okay, so welcome. And so in case you aren't familiar with us, uh, Midwest Women's Herbal, is a women-led and women-empowered organization that has been producing herbal and personal growth events in person and virtually for over 12 years. We produce two in-person events and one live virtual series annually, as well as ongoing virtual courses and on-demand workshop recordings. To find out more, visit our website at midwestwomensherbal.com. Just a couple little small pieces of housekeeping before we begin. And in the coming days, we're going to be sending you some emails with some uh, really lovely and amazing offers in them. And we want to make sure you receive them. Uh, we know that a lot of times our emails can go into spam or promotions. So we have a couple strategies to help you avoid that. You can add our email, herbwomen at gmail.com, to your contacts. And tonight, when we send you a short email with some nice little coupon codes in it and whatnot, um, go ahead and hit the reply and just say hello. And that will let your email server know that we're friends and that you want to receive emails from us. And then you'll get all the deals that we send your way and you won't miss anything. Uh, we have a couple of announcements before we dive in. Um, as many of you may know or may not know, our Spring Herbal Conference, which is at the end of May, is officially sold out. It's very exciting, but there is still opportunity for you to attend if you uh, missed, missed the opportunity to register for the weekend. We still have some amazing, amazing workshops for immersions and pre-conference events um, that will be happening the week prior. And those are still open for registration. So please go on over to MidwestWomensHerbal.com and check out all of our amazing pre-conference workshops because you can put together a really beautiful package um, the week um, before the conference and, and just have a really nice um, um, deep dive immersion into the herbal world. So we welcome you to do that. Um, so we have some exciting news from our Herb Women classroom. Um, many of you may be familiar with our um, Herb Women classroom. We have um, an online platform where we host uh, specific modules and online programs and because we wanted to curate and go a little bit deeper and give women who aren't in the Midwest or into traveling an opportunity to learn wise women um, traditions from teachers from all over the world. Um, so we have a new course that we're launching, uh, officially on Mother's Day, but registration will open sooner than that, um, with our, with our friend Isla, who is with us tonight, and, um, we are going to be giving away that course tonight at the end of the call, so you need to stay for the whole time in order to, uh, have a chance to win that. We are also giving away of Isla's, a copy of Isla's book, book Weeds Heal, also at the end of the conversation tonight. So we, um, we have that to, 
um, to end our conversation with tonight. So please stay for the whole call. Okay, so I am honored to introduce Linda Conroy. Linda is the founder of Midwest Women's Herbal Conference, Mycelium Mysteries Women's Mushroom Conference, the In Her Own Hands Women's Wellness Series, and the owner of Moonwise Herbs. She also offers both in-person and virtual apprenticeships. Linda is a bioregional herbalist who has been practicing and teaching herbalism in the wise woman tradition for over 30 years. Welcome, Linda. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> thank you for the introduction and thank you for getting us started. <laughs> I know we um, usually read our mission and vision statement. And so I was gonna, I'm gonna invite Jill if you're willing mm -hmm. to do that. Um, we have a vision and mission, and we always like to read it because it kind of sets the stage for our time together and the way we like to view our community. So, Jill, are you willing to do that? Absolutely. All right. So our mission statement is Midwest Women's Herbal provides herbal education and opportunities for transformation. Immersed in the wise women tradition, grandmothers, mothers, daughters, sisters, and children gather in a co-created village. Through earth-centered healing and nourishment, we ally with the plants that grow around us. From the ground up, we connect to weave ourselves, our families, and our communities into the dynamic spiral of health. And our vision statement is, we live in a world where the feminine is honored and respected, where women stand fully in their power, acknowledging their wisdom, skills, and innate healing abilities. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And welcome everyone to the village. Really grateful um, that you're here. And I'm looking forward to tonight's conversation. I'm going to introduce to you our guest speaker for this evening. And the this evening we were calling Weeds Heal, which is the title of uh, I was a book that Isla wrote. I was the author of four books. And one of them is a book called Wait Weeds Heal, A Working Herbal. And I'm going to read a little bit about what Isla gave us for her bio so I don't miss anything. And I want to, it's a lot in her words. So it's nice to hear her voice in this. It is more than 50 years since I began my lifelong journey into the complex world of medicinal plants. And an unopened packet of seeds still thrills me with delight. I'm a plant woman, a gardener, grower, medicine maker, teacher, a holistic scientist, and have been for many years an herbal medicine practitioner. And she created the um, Center, Wakedo Center for Herbal Studies in 1990. And she taught at, at that college, which she ran for many years. And then she started the uh, the International College of Herbal Medicine and ran that for many years. And now she has her homestead where she runs programs and she is in um, uh, several films and has shared her wisdom through her books, through her teaching for many, many years, as she said, 50 years. I met Isla in, I believe, 1998, and she became my very dear friend and teacher very quickly. I've been working with herbs for all of those years, and she has had a big influence on my work as an herbalist. And some of the reasons I'm really grateful and really wanted to bring this conversation um, tonight to share with all of you is that Isla has a really special way of working directly with plant relationships and bringing them in for holistic healing in an insightful and a curious way. And so I'm really delighted to have this conversation this evening to be highlighting uh, her book, Weeds Heal, which we actually are printing for the first time here in the United States. It's going to be available directly. We've been bringing it from New Zealand for a long time, and the, the shipping expense became more than we liked. So we've, we've now, we're now printing it. It just came into the printer this week, actually, which is super exciting. And we also are launching a course with Isla um, because she just has such a special way of teaching. I think you're going to really enjoy this evening. I love that she invited us all to bring dandelion. I hope many of you did. If you brought your dandelion, hold her up and share with everybody. 
And so I'm going to open it up to Isla. And um, we're going to start with, uh, I believe, a meditation, um, a sharing about the plants, and then a conversation. Is that how you wanted to start this evening, Isla? Welcome. Yeah, I'll call it um, a kind of mini plant immersion, really, and um, just take you through some of the main uh, steps in how I work. And I have to say that probably now I would add quite a bit more at the beginning and more at the end of uh, what is in Weeds Heal. Um, but I, I've really found it a, a, an extraordinary way to open people's eyes into both trusting themselves and trusting the relationship and teachings from the plants that we work with. Um, I named my property here Viriditas, which means the greening power. Um, I live on an area of quite a substantial area of very wild land uh, in central Otago in, in New Zealand, South Island. And, you know, basically it's a hot, dry, cold, dry climate with, you know, rain every now and then, snow occasionally. Um, not as cold as you get uh, in Wisconsin, um, but, and not as muggy, I, I think. Uh, but I have now probably, a, there's a, over 175 medicinal plants growing on this land. That's a lot of plants to have an intimate relationship with. And um, I am totally stunned when I get an opportunity to look at the plant we're going to look at today and find something new in the teachings from that. So I've, I've brought in a, a dandelion from my garden today. You can imagine that root would have gone a lot, lot way further down than I was able to dig. Um, and a, a beautiful uh, head of leaves. And I'll be uh, working with you in our way through this uh, in a few moments. But when I was, you know, kind of just thinking about dandelion and how when I first arrived on this land, um, there wasn't a single dandelion and I never planted one but pretty soon um, they arrived and now I would say it will be a cast of thousands and how wonderful is that mm -hmm. and I've been known to say so many times over the last I think it's actually getting to 55 years Linda <laughs> over the last <laughs> 55 years um if everyone would just eat a few dandelions every day, we would be a way healthier population. Yes, that's an assignment think, that I give to people. <laughs> yes. I mean, think about it. You come home, you've been out. I don't eat out anymore because I never feel as good as I do when I eat at home. Um, but you come in, you've been to a party or you've been to something else and you're just not feeling really comfortable in your stomach. A couple of dandelion leaves and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. You've drunk too much alcohol, you're feeling a bit nauseous, a couple of dandelion leaves and you'll be fine. So we have this extraordinary plant that is both medicine it is a nutrient supplement. It is a teacher that when you think about it in its wholeness, you think about how it finds its way to wherever people walk. And People laugh, my, my course participants here laugh because my tunnel house is basically filled with dandelions. Um, 
The resilience, though, when you find the same plant, still Taraxacum officinalis, out in the open, well-trodden, mowed, you know, treated with disrespect. And what it, does it do? Just flowers closer to the ground and it splays its, its, um, its leaves out into a rosette and it hugs close. So this extraordinary capacity for being resilient and adaptable. And I know we overuse those words in today's world, but ad adaptable is certainly something we need. So that was one of the, the lessons I, I had um, today when I was thinking about dandelion and, and um, bringing it into ourselves, that it's just not just an example of how we can be in today's world, and it doesn't grow where people aren't, so it's really got that close relationship. And then this holistic, both medicine and nutritive tonic and it is really pretty special um, when you look at it from that perspective. So um I think we'll just start Linda. Uh well can I can I back up one just for a minute and ask you a question? Yeah yeah sure. Because I'm thinking about all the people who might be on the call who aren't familiar with um, your book, Weeds Heal. We talked about it in the beginning and you're, you dove right in, which is um, something that this is such a beautiful cover. And I know you have a lot of um, uh, pictures of the plants under the microscope in the book that really help you get closer to the plants. This is nettle under the microscope, if you can see that. It's so amazing to see. And so as you're showing that and talking about this, could you just say a couple sentences at least about your intention with this book? I, um, when I first encountered it, it I, right away I thought, oh, this is such a lovely way for me to go and do what I call dirt time and, and learn directly from the plants rather than from the internet or from, a, from I mean, this book guides you in a process to use your senses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I see many purposes for it from my vantage point. Um, one is to work with herbs as a healing modality. One is just to have a relationship with plants in the natural mm -hmm. world, probably the first and foremost. And then another one I see as a, um, as a way to um, develop a survival skill. And really know yeah. the plants. So I'm wondering what your intentions were. <laughs> Those are ones I extrapolated for myself. But well, 1998 was quite a wee while ago, right? Mm -hmm. So I was um, at that time I was running the Waikato Centre for Herbal Studies, and um, it this came about. Uh, the the part of it, you know, I'm always on for honouring teachers. The part of it that came from Susan Weed was the colour chakra part. And then I was working in a, a teaching a three-year diploma in, in clinical herbal medicine. And the students kept saying, why don't you write this down? You know, why don't you start the the process so that we've all got a copy of it? And um so that kind of got me, you know, really stirred up, I guess, and 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 made a commitment. Um, but at the time, the there were a, you know, when you had those kind of not a, not embodied mentors, I had a series of mentors. I called them the thirteen women, and. They were very much closely in my life at that time. They still are. I've got now a circle of rocks that represent each one of them. And I remember I was planning a book on women's health. And one morning in my meditation, um, one of the women said quite clearly in my ear, you can write that if you like. 
but this is the book that you will be remembered for. And she presented the name and they actually wrote the beginning, the first. I just sat down and it was like automatic writing. I just wrote it out and thought, wow. So there's, you know, didn't have an option really, did I? <laughs> um, and and then um, I had a, a student at the time who was a fine line uh, artist and she really put the text into exquisite drawings. Mm -hmm. And I met uh, Barry O'Brien, who was a, um, a botanist and a photographer, and he had a, he was a university lecturer, and he had this extraordinary microscope that had a camera attached. And I mean, he really did do the most stunning photos. Now, I have to say I paid for it. I'm not talking about paid for it in money. I'm talking about paid for it in time. I'd meet him at the university after his day's uh, lecturing, maybe around 7 o'clock at night. I never used to get home till 7 o'clock the next morning because he took <laughs> so much time over each photo oh no it wasn't quite right wasn't quite right wasn't quite right um but in the process of that we had some pretty interesting discussions uh about the world in general so they though the two of them they helped and then um Caxton Press did the first layout and and design for it and I'm happy that it's still out there I think we're in sixth or seventh printing now and people still talk about it um so I'm utterly grateful to Linda for suggesting that Linda and her amazing group of women um that help run everything um that they wanted to print it in the U.S. Um, because it just means now that it's available and hopefully people will pick it up and run with it and add their own and um, and learn a lot. Well, and the thing, the reason that I feel so excited about it and having learned some of the skills directly from you is that it teaches a skill. It's not an herb book that yeah. gives you information. There's information there for sure, but really it teaches you a skill that yes, you can then does. keep for the rest of your life, deepen your relationship with the plants. And that has yeah. been my experience with the book it's yeah. been my experience spending time with you and that book is a classic I mean I I think it's going to be useful forever so thank yeah. you for writing it and thank you for um, sharing it and allowing us to print it well will we go through um perhaps some of that process we won't get it all done today but we could at least make a start and then people might have some questions um about that Great. but I could take you through how I'd begin um so yeah will we yes and yeah. just just to say just again for people who have never been exposed to the book or your work is what you're talking about is really approaching the plant and utilizing our own senses and relationship mm -hmm. without sometimes I I say and I, I think you say this too actually if you don't know the plant it's even better because you're more open to how it's expressing itself <laughs> the possibility yeah, and then and then when you go and read all that you've um, experienced or at least I think the process um, provides about if you take it take it through at least 70 percent of the the um, what I now call our affinities that a plant has. So you, you probably need to understand that that this place here and my teaching, in my teaching, plants come first. So they are number one. They are number one consideration. And that actually makes this place where I live now quite special. 
So, you know, no, no animals grazing, no, none of that. We have uh, wild rabbits that I have to shoot every now and then um, if they get too many. But it is, it is plants are number one consideration. So that creates respect. And for me, that is really important now as I go through um, this, this next phase of my life here. With the, with the dandelion, I would first look at where it grows. So a little bit of what I said before is about where it grows, about being resilient, about being adaptable. And then we move into a more personal relationship. But it also occurred to me that the, this morning that the dandelion as a whole is, a, is an icon for herbal medicine in the world. When you think about how it pops up, having needed to go underground for a bit, but it pops up and between, you know, out of weed mat, which is where this one came from, between uh, concrete cracks and a path. I mean, it just isn't going to stay down. And when you think about the, 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 the passage of a holistic, and I'm going to say whole plant medicine in today's world, it, it has undergone some pretty severe crushings over the lifetime of, of, um, of wise woman healing. So that was an interesting teaching that I got. Now, look, I've lived with dandelion for like 55 years, um, plus probably, um, and, and yet I'm still learning. So it doesn't matter where, where you start from, there is always more and there always will be more. What Linda didn't say about my current work um, is that I now I've been uh, working with a, a, I didn't tell her this to say it. That's why she didn't say it. Um, I but, know, like, um, <laughs> um, but I now uh, co-run a, a two-year community herbalist program that grew out of our lockdown um, during uh, COVID. And, you know, I saw that the, which you do have a lot more of in the States, the, the bioregional uh, focus for herbal medicine uh, is absolutely essential that you know your local plants, that you're not buying in something expensive from overseas where you've got no idea how it was produced, how it was grown, what disrespect there was or, or anything else there. So, so this has been our current focus. And in that, I'm doing a lot of, um, what shall I say, questioning long-held beliefs and, and looking at different ways of doing science. And that excites me. So, um, okay, will we start? Yeah? So go ahead. You can dive in. You're going to dive okay. into the dandelion. Yeah. And right. And so other than happens. yeah, looking at where it's growing and how it's growing and processing over time, um, I then would say, all right, what makes you take notice of me? And of course, there is nothing like my tunnel house or the field outside filled with dandelion flowers in the kind of mid-spring really. So you're probably heading for this right now. Um, the, the yellow flowers are just extraordinary. And um, we know how to recognize because it's one stalk per flower head. And then I'd say, oh, yellow. Okay. It's a key. So I'm all for building keys because they give us insights. And I don't think one key is the answer. What I think is that there are some main keys and then we build on those with what else we find. 
So if we're just looking at the above ground part of the plant first, that is what we would take notice of. Now, to some people to say, okay, yellow flower um, is going to support this whole liver, pancreas, um, liver, uh, gallbladder, pancreas, spleen, stomach, that, that is going a bit far. But I don't. I say, okay, are there other keys that would support that? So what do these taste like? You take a few petals, chew, top two teeth, bottom two teeth, tip of your tongue, and chew and chew and chew, and you don't swallow until the plant material has disappeared. So chew, chew, chew. If you've got one there, try it. So what have we got? We've got a little bit of sweetness. Definitely not unpleasant. In fact, would I add this to salads? Absolutely. Because there is that sweetness there. Interestingly, the petals of dandelion have a, a, a nutritional substance called lecithin. And we know that lecithin is important for brain health and probably pancreatic health too, actually. So then I'd look at the underneath and I'd try one of these green, which are, are the sepals, they're the, what cover the bud. So I'd try one of those. Now it's quite safe when you don't know a plant, other than the hybridized plants we grow in our flower gardens, it's quite safe for you to taste half the size of your small fingernail. And as long as you don't swallow it and you chew between the top two teeth, bottom two teeth and tip of your tongue and chew and chew and chew, it's perfectly fine. I've tasted many a poisonous plant that way. So we can take probably... And I, uh, can I say something about yeah, Just yeah. because I think sometimes it's helpful for people to understand that. I compare it to a wine tasting. When you go to a wine tasting, mm -hmm. they tend to swish it around in your mouth yeah. and spit it out and yeah. not swallow it. So that's what you're yeah. talking about. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And eventually when you chew and chew and chew and the plant dissipates, um, you, there's nothing left there. Your warning signs are there. The warning signs are if you get irritation in the back of your throat, they get stronger and stronger as the plant material disappears. That's one warning sign. The other big warning sign is if you profusely salivate, like pour. I don't mean soapiness, but pouring mm -hmm. salivation. That's a, an, another warning. And that's and, the body's um, uh, dilution of poisons. Yeah, that's right. I think yeah. that's fascinating and, when our bodies are so wise that way. <laughs> um, I'm just smelling this right now. You know, smell is also a really good primary way of, of saying, do I want to put this in my mouth? And as I took off that green these little green sepals, mm -hmm. what I'm smelling is something pretty nice and definitely not off-putting, but it smells like other plants that I know are in this family. So anyway, I'm going to taste that, those green sepals. Chew, chew, chew. Ooh. Wow. Have you got one there, Linda? Yeah, I'm trying to get to the sepal. The petals are. <laughs> and can can people just feed if they are tasting this? Can you feed in what you what that initial taste was? For the flower. No, that green. Oh, for the green. So yeah. if anybody else is tasting, if you want to, yeah, uh, jump in and in the chat and say what what it's tasting like. Yeah, um, it's better. Yeah, it's bitter, but it doesn't last long, right? No. And there's no, in fact, the more I taste sepals, 
the more I think, yeah, I could include that. So no, Jill doesn't. Well, Jill, Jill, just wait. You know, they'll come. Um, I just uh, read that message there. So, so then I move. Asking Isla, we yeah. might want to answer this now just um, yeah, because somebody was asking about mushrooms and um, if the tasting of mushrooms um, is, is can you can do this test or is it too risky? No, too risky. Big no. Big no. A big no. Mm -hmm. Definitely not. Plants and mushrooms have very different <laughs> they, personalities. They, uh, they're tricky beings, my word. Um, then I'd go on and I'd look at how you've got these, they're called involucral bracts actually in botany. Oh, you've got these little green things that kind of curve back. I and then I never know. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and then I'd taste some of those too. What are you tasting? Oh, the so little involucral so bracts, these, these little what, things that come. Um, where am I? You know, that oh, right kind of curve back. back. Yeah, mm -hmm. under the bracts. And for those of you who don't have dandelion flowers or dandelions, write a little bit of this down. And when they flower, go sit outside and do this. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Even those, you know, again, mildly bitter, not too serious. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing about reading in Weeds Heal that I now would change is I've said, be careful with the stalk. But in a very, very beautiful book by Stephen Barstow, who lives in Norway, and it's called, can you see that? It's around, called Around, around the World. And, yeah. He does this amazing thing called dandy noodles and he's got a lovely recipe in there that you soak the stalks uh, for two to three hours in salty water scald with boiling water several times so blah 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 and um i think i've got the right one here and then boil for 30 minutes no, that he doesn't do that with the noodles. I'm sorry, I've just put you wrong there. Um, it it's only if you want to get rid of the bitterness, which we don't want to get rid of because we know it's too good. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, I just pick those when they're in flour, take the flour heads off, and then put them into vinegar, and then I cook these for about 15 to 20 minutes. They are delicious. And we tried it one year with the clocks, and then these were way too bitter then. So when you've got a whole field of dandelion flowers and you've got a whole lot of these stalks, you try it. It's really stunningly beautiful um, as a, a culinary delight. So we note... Yeah. Something you're asking, I'd be curious to hear your your answer to this. Um, I you would have my own, but um, how do you do you? Somebody's asking if you wash them if you're concerned about fertilizer or weed killer. Like, what would you do in that case? Um, so for me personally, it's not an issue because there's no you know sprays or or anything here. If they're right right on the side of the road, I would be careful about that so I'd look for for parts of the plant being I'd look for it being further away and you can usually tell if there's been a weedicide applied because the leaves will look brown mm -hmm. so you've got a guide but I'd I'd be a bit careful um I think there is there is some reference, I'd have to look this up, but there's some reference to dandelions concentrating cobalt. Um, but I'd need to look that up, Linda. I, I, I don't have it in my brain right now. And I think it was an issue here because there was cobalt in fertilizer that was applied um to and and that could be a, a concern 
Well, I know the question sounded like a, um, the person has some drifting into their yard from neighbors. And personally, I <clears throat> often tell people, you know, there are a lot of organic farms that are up against conventional farms. And yeah. so they're kind of in the same boat there. So I think about harvesting, you know, away from the edges. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, in the areas where you're not going to get so much of that. Um, and I think generally it's considered that uh, unless it's a windy day when they're spraying, but most of that spray will fall within one to two meters mm -hmm. of where it's designed to fall. And if you were concerned about that, you will have a prevailing wind on your place. So then always look to gathering away from the prevailing wind on the other side of that. Um, and then you've got a, a safety margin there. But yeah, I'd wash too, wash and then touch dry. Yeah, I try not to wash if I don't have to because there's Me too. the benefits yeah. to not yeah. washing. But um, yeah. when you were just back to the tasting, when it, somebody was asking about if it would be, ever be too bitter, do you ever, uh, maybe that's a chance to talk about bitters. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I'm coming to that when we start yeah. on the leaf. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. But uh, yeah, I haven't finished with the flower yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> but look, I have just put my nose right in there. My God, it is so beautifully fragrant. I mean, have you ever really smelt a dandelion flower? I think all of you would go. Oh, my goodness, I didn't know it smelled like that. It's like a, 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 a beautiful perfume that you'd find in a garden flower, like, you know, a spring flower. It's there. And um, so I say this is not in Weed's Hill, by the way because this is, you know, more later development. But I say, okay, how's that making me feel? What is it that I'm starting to feel in my body? Now, it is just making me feel like I want to roll in a whole paddock of it. It's enlivening my thinking. It's opening up something in my body here. Now doing this with a group and you're all feeding in and you find that other people are experiencing the same thing really makes herbal med or plant study, plant focus study really exciting. Has anyone got a flower there, by the way, that they're breathing in? This is so beautiful. I do. And I have to say that I know there are people here from Wisconsin who don't have flowers. Mine were in my greenhouse. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, they do have some <laughs> microclimates where I'm seeing them, you know, against like. You yeah, know, they're going to come soon though, right? Yes, very soon. Yeah, yeah. It's going to yeah. burst, absolutely. Yeah. So now let's um, move on to the, the other part of the above ground plant that we see. And what makes this a dandelion? I'll get a somewhat larger leaf there. Oh, I see Christy was smelling the flower with us too. So we had some co company. A few, a few smellers there. Yes. Um, so the, the, the midrib at the back there of the dandelion, um, in this, this particular plant, there's a slight pinkish spotted um, part to it. And it's hollow, that midrib is hollow I've always said look for the one that has no hairs but there's actually a dandelion that grows in New Zealand that does have some very fine hairs so that's not 
always the case, but mostly the leaf is smooth and the outside of the leaf is toothed. The one with the hairs, is that a variety or a different species? Um, I have no idea, Linda, but mm -hmm. it tastes like a dandelion, looks like a dandelion, every other um, like a dandelion. So, yeah, everything else about it is the same. It's just that it's hairy. And will it have been a cross? I doubt it, because you would have seen that in the flowers. So I'm not sure. Not sure. Okay. Um, I think that red spot, if you can see that, I don't know if you can, but look at it on yours, that red spotting on the midrib uh, is a minor key. So we'll keep that in mind. Um, but when, when you say key, so um, I just for people who might not, you know, totally have a relationship to that word with what you're doing, it's an indicator. It, it, yeah. it communicates yeah. information yeah. about. Yeah. yeah, it's like unlocking some aspect. So it's a way in mm -hmm. for us. It's a way because in. Because, you know, I, I'm not the person that would say, oh, the plant's talking to me. No, I don't. I absolutely do not think that. It's what w the story we tell ourselves. And this is what we're doing here, is we're telling ourselves a story in a way that we can understand so that we hold that plant at the center of the, the whole um, immersion into its whole being. And I do find that working in this way with plants that they come somehow get it and then there's an opening of that channel so the keys are just the unlocking the doorways of layers there with this with the leaf I'd start with a small part of the leaf top two teeth bottom two teeth tip of your tongue Yours will taste different from mine because we're at the end of, of the growing season. Although these look pretty lush. Mild, bitter, underlying saltiness, indicating all the minerals that the plant has. And it is a treasure chest of minerals. There's also some vitamins, particularly beta carotenes and some C in there as well. Um, so whatever the mineral representation of your soil profile is, the, the, it will also find its way into the dandelion. The next thing I'd do is taste some of the upper midrib. A little bit juicy, quite nice actually, mm -hmm. but a uh, little bitterness on the tip of your tongue there. Go down the stem right to the bottom and taste some of that. Immediately, there is a stronger bitterness. So, I'm getting close to lunchtime. Oh, that is really bitter. I'm getting close to lunchtime. So my stomach is starting to growl because I'm having a lot more bitter. <laughs> as soon as it's on your tongue there, Linda, did you want to ask something there? No, no. no I was just enjoying okay. it. I was thinking about something. but I, you Okay. Know. Um, as soon as you've got that bitterness in your mouth, it sends off through the vagus nerve connection, message to your stomach, start producing some, some of the digestive juices, then through to your liver, and as a mild liver tonic and stimulation, then through the gallbladder, which is going to put out more bile to enhance the digestive process, also through to the pancreas and then right through the digestive system into the bloodstream, which is incidentally how I read that key of the 
red at the back, back of the, the leaf, and then through to the kidneys. So you've got this amazing, you know, influence here. Settles the stomach by increasing digestion, stimulates the liver and therefore gallbladder by producing more bile to enhance fat digestion. Incidentally, the bile is the body's natural laxative, so it's going to go and affect the, the elimination through the large bowel and then through to the pancreas. So it's very useful for people who have blood sugar issues and then through to kidney function um, and improving diuresis. What more could you want from a plant, you know, to do all of that? <laughs> And we haven't even got to the root yet. So I eat dandelion leaves every day, which is why I've got a tunnel house full of them because I want them in the winter. I think that's um, the thing that um, often when I give people the assignment to just eat three dandelion leaves a day is my assignment. Yes. People are like, that's all you have to do? Like, you don't have to turn it into anything. You don't have to make anything. You just go out there and you just eat three dandelion leaves a day. And it's going to have that full effect of what you're describing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, quite remarkable, really. So how, what's my favorite? Well, uh, some of my students uh, love vinegars and they'll put dandelion leaves uh, into vinegar. Um, to extract the minerals and the bitterness. Some will, um, uh, for a stronger diuretic effect, we could tincture the dried leaves. It has, in, uh, in various uh, anti-inflammatory indices, dandelion comes up as such a strong and powerful anti-inflammatory that if you were really wanting that, you could dry and powder the leaves and have it on your food every day uh, in that way. Um, some people will use the just um, eating for improving especially uh, a diuretic effect. And the dandelion leaves are quite high in potassium. So the traditional or the medical um, diuretics leach potassium, so that maintains that level there. Um, uh, um, many, many years ago, one of my uh, course participants, she decided she would try um, to, to prove the, the effect of the leaf versus the root on a diuretic effect. And what she did was she um, did, took um, uh, one month of uh, dandelion leaf tincture. She measured all the fluid that she took in and then measured her urine output. She did exactly the same. She had a washout period and then did exactly the same with the root and measured the fluid intake and and output, the leaf produced a way, way more urine than the root. And that's what is generally uh, reported in the literature, that a dandelion leaf will have a stronger effect. That doesn't mean to say it doesn't have an affinity because we've already tasted the bitterness in it. It has an affinity for the liver, right? So it doesn't mean to say it doesn't have that but it has a stronger effect um, compared to the root on kidney diuresis. Okay, so then... So we, I wanted to um, mention, yeah. there was a comment in the chat about um, the taste and mixed reviews on the taste. And one of the things that I notice is the, I, the more years I eat bitter, the less... Uh, like I enjoy the taste now it's something I enjoy but sometimes I'll introduce it to students and, and I'll look at their faces when they taste it and the bitter you know they'll make all kinds of faces and I think it's an acquired taste and a lot of cultures though eat bitters it's just that those of they us who are 
yeah. you know, have yeah. grown it up in cultures where we don't eat bitters and we focus on sweet and salt, that we have to get used to them and acquire a taste. Yeah. But it usually yeah. happens because our bodies like it. <laughs> the the it's it's as though we're pre-programmed for that. You know, we 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 love bitters actually, and we should love bitters historically or evolutionary from an evolutionary perspective. But I've also noticed with students who go Ugh, at dandelion, doesn't take long, and then their taste for sweet is reduced. Mm -hmm. So it does have like a, a tonifying effect on our taste buds. And I think it's because sweet and salt are so uh, addictive mm. that people love those. I hardly eat anything sweet. And I eat a truckload <laughs> of dandelion leaves. I know um, somebody mentioned so, that yeah. earlier. I think Jill mentioned that earlier when she had the experimental experience with eating dandelions. It, was, was that, did I read that correctly, Jill? Yeah, when I was apprenticing with you, you had me eating like, th I think three a day or whatever you said, and I have a sweet tooth and I've always had a sweet tooth. And I started, I craved sweet significantly less when I was eating dandelions and I learned to love that better. So I'm really looking forward to when I can pick them all summer again. Okay, you might want to start with the root because there, there is a, you know, is, is a sweeter um a sweeter part to the root. Okay, I'm just cutting off. Whoops, the um, the root. Because I want to, so I've just cut the root off its. That is top. such a beautiful dandelion root. Do you want to hold that up one more time? a little longer so everybody can see it it's quite spectacular <laughs> that is one seriously good root it is um i would put this into uh some of that more of that into the vinegar that i'm going to make later so if i slice this root not all the way through but enough to have a look at the center. Now, what is typical, I might have to do that smaller one so that you can see it. What is typical of the roots of members of this family is that they have a center core. And you might be able to see it there. Uh, yeah, see that center core? Yeah. yeah. So how I see that, this runs right through the center of the plant and each root. And you can, if you're very, very careful, uh, you can and um, well done, Isla, you've been very careful. Uh, so you can actually see that this is quite the core. Can you see that? Yep, now we can. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is another key, right? This is a really good one because there's something about it. If we needed more understanding of the bitter taste, this would give a very strong indicator of the whole of the digestive system in my way of reading that. And you could um, even taste that part. So we're going to taste a little bit of the root if you've got one there. Uh, again, you know, no more than that small part of your fingernail. Top two teeth, bottom two teeth. Whoop! That is a seriously good root. Wow. It is so bitter. 
so you've got to remember that we're, we're going into the time when it's the optimum time for gathering roots. In New Zealand, you're going into the... Yeah. Yeah. Fall. That is the strongest bitter yet. So it is going to have one amazing effect on the uh, liver, digestion, general, all those things we talked about. I found this interesting because I usually follow up with some um, further experimentation. And while this was a root from a small um, plant that was in a path that had been mown over, but still the same time of year, I suspect it's a one-year-old root and there is... Um, no inulin, which you would see as a white uh, uh, part settling into the bottom. What happened last weekend um, when my class was making, uh, digging dandelion roots, and we were digging big roots out of the side of the garden that had been there for probably like this one, you know, two or three years, probably three when I look at how many um, side shoots of that, that all came from the same root. So I, I am guessing four years actually mm. for that um, plant. That their dandelion, that was all, their roots were also really good that they dug. Um, they produced inulin overnight. So I'm going to do, put this root in, vinegar after I get off um, here today and I'm expecting to see a lot of inulin overnight. Somebody was asking Isla if you ever peel the roots. Never. Never. And why no. or why not? <laughs> why why would I? Not. Why why not? I, why wouldn't I? Mm -hmm. um, I think that the outside, I'm about whole plant medicine. And I feel that when we respect the plant, we respect its wholeness. So if you wanted to taste, you could taste the difference between a little bit of that cover, right? Wow, seriously bitter. And then a little bit of just the white, right? even more bitter but this has a little bit of like a parsnipy taste or there's another taste there in the white part and no in the in the cover in, in the, the root cover, cover. Uh -huh. when i chew 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 i would say more minerally rich mm -hmm. less bitter but more minerals too valuable yeah so I just give them a really good scrub and then dry it off I know I try not to peel anything yeah there was a um, little bit of um confusion earlier that people were um somebody thought they heard you say dia diabetic diabetic and somebody else thought you said can I please take a moment and put the worm outside yes <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to clarify for us what dandelions benefit as a diuretic and even though i don't she didn't say diabetes it still does have a benefit um so i would like her to say something about that after she takes her worm uh, what, I, what, I, what i did say linda um was that I do think dandelions contribute to blood sugar level management Mm -hmm. because of the way the bitters act through the small intestine and the absorption slows it down and it is the inulin in the plant that helps with that mm -hmm. so you get less of that seesawing so I did say that but I didn't I didn't mention diabetes as far as I'm aware right okay just wanted to clarify because there was some discussion about that so 
Well, um, I am wondering, we've been at this for a little over an hour, and I'm wondering, um, were you, did you finish up with the plants, and do you want to start to take a few questions? Um, or yeah, did you, did you look, I just, well, I'd like to, to finish, actually, this is in another book that Linda, uh, thankfully, thank you, Linda, carries, but I did do um, a more of a, you know, info rather than a, an exploratory part. But just to mention, so the wild leaves have vitamins A, B, C and D, carotenoids and protein, minerals, potassium, lots of, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, iron and copper. The equally wild roots contain A, B, C and D and minerals, potassium, calcium, sodium, phosphorus, iron, nickel, cobalt, tin, copper, and zinc. There is an astonishing array of plant chemicals. The leaves, the leaves have quite a good levels of choline, which has a, a, a substance that's really important for our heart and blood vessels, liver and kidneys, potassium as we've talked about, bitter as we've talked about. And then the root, the leaves don't have any inulin. The root is what has this inulin. You won't find it in the summer or spring, but you will find it now. And um, it's consider inulin to be a prebiotic, not a probiotic, a prebiotic. It's like putting fertilizer on your garden. It's like putting that into the, the small intestine. The flowers, more lecithin than soy, brain function, fat digestion, possibly some liver. And um, uh, James Duke in his book, James isn't alive with us now, but um, in his book, uh, Anti-Aging Prescriptions, he talks about just gathering a whole pile of, of dandelion clocks and setting a light to them and that just they burn off burn off it burns off all the clocks and then you're left with the seed and it's a way of getting the seed you'd need a lot <laughs> all right so okay um, yeah um so somebody was asking about the name of the book you're holding up oh you mean um this one yes so i've written two books on women's health and um, Linda has them both. Um, and some uh, beautiful photography by Mary Allen. And it's, yeah, good, good, especially this one, good basic women's health understanding. Um, there is a, a second one that... So a volume two that goes into ages and stages in a, a lot more detail. Um, but I will be covering that whole topic from a clinical perspective uh, at the, now that's in January, Linda, isn't it? Well, the, the women's the, health. The course is going to, we're going to talk about it after we're finished here. The course is going to be launched um, pretty much immediately and officially on Mother's Day. And people will have oh, right. until January to do the course and then have a live question and answer session with you. So that's how that's right. going to work. Right. And it's cool. based, the course is based on, some of it's based on those books. Because, yeah. yeah. Especially that first um, book, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Now, I also want to, for those people, um, so all of those three books, like the work, the Weeds Heal and the two Women's Health and Wellbeing Kete books, they, they actually sell quite well. This one doesn't sell nearly so well, and I think it's my best work. <laughs> <laughs> but it's because this takes that... Um, process of weeds heal into another 
area. So this is more about um, working with individual plants from a from a Jungian mandala perspective. So it's taking the two should really go together. This is the 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 start and, and getting you really um, you know on a intimate relationship. This takes you to another level of working. And um, I I work a lot in in both these these ways with a plant that is new to me. In fact, I haven't got enough years left to cover all the plants I want to. I know it's it it's actually keeps life interesting. <laughs> And, yes, you know, it does. And, as you were talking, I was, you know, thinking about something I know I say all the time, and I know I um, gathered it from working with you, is that a big, when we work with herbs, and we only go look at them from a scientific, like it's going to heal me perspective, a big piece of the medicine is missing, mm -hmm. because the relationship mm -hmm. is, we've co-evolved in relationship with these plants and the mm. relationship is a huge part of the healing of the medicine and mm. it's part of our personal relationship and connection and deepening mm. that is super important and yeah. really grateful I for agree. emphasizing mm. that over and over and over again yeah so you know we can look at it from these two perspectives so we have the the um this is how I, i'm i'm running my new program is we're looking at it from a um a scientific analytic what i say is an analytical perspective so we can analyze and then we look at the holistic perspective where we consider the integrity of the plant in all of its manifestations so those two bring together the limitations, well, they show the limitations of if you're only going to look at this plant does that, because then you're not looking at the whole other being. And we know now that these are sentient and aware life forms, and they are capable of self-expression. If you want to, to follow um, that one, uh, then may I suggest this beautiful um, book called Thus Spoke the Plant. And it's an American, uh, oh no, not that one. Sorry, got the wrong one. This, this is good too, thinking like a plant. Um, Thus spoke the plant is by. Do you have that, Linda? I think it's by Larry. And, no, no. I do have it on my other shelf, not nearby. Uh, we can. Uh, I would. We can put it in a follow up yeah. email yeah. if you want to just send us the title. Yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah. wanted let's, to. Um, let's do that. I wanted to bring up something that's in the chat here, which I know you'll have some things to say about. And I, we're, you know, we're, we have just a little bit more time. And I think this is important, especially in this day and age and, and people's relationships with the plants. Somebody is asking if there's any part of the dandelion that's dangerous to eat. No. <laughs> there is not. Um, and that is why I used to say, you know, use these stalks with care, but no, not anymore. Mm -hmm. When you taste some dandelion noodles, you'll you'll agree. I'm making, so no. I love that. So I want people are asking about putting dandelion leaves up for winter time. I know I blanch them. You put them in vinegar, like you're you're doing. Put the whole plant in vinegar to infuse it. Um, I dry yeah, but um, when you do that, you know, infuse the two, the root and the leaves. Infuse those separately because what happens chemically in 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 the extracting process of the vinegar 
is they'll extract certain things and that influences the extraction of others. So it's good to do them both separately and then join the two together. And you could do the same with the flower heads as well. Um, uh, and again, separately yeah, um, so and join them really together. Important, yeah. important point. um, but also drying them, Linda, and yeah, drying the leaves. It's a great way to, to add dandelions to your soups and, and casseroles and so on. Absolutely. So I just want to see, are there any last questions that anybody's burning to ask before we um, come to a close? And we're going to be actually offering and giving away Isla's book to somebody who's on the call here tonight. And we're going to be giving away our course. And we're also going to be offering anybody who doesn't win um, some discounts on those things as well, because we'd love to see you um, participate. And so um, is there anybody who has a last burning question that they want to put out there? I know we've been answering them as we go along. So I know that people may have gotten their questions answered. So, And Leah says, love this rich discussion. Yes, this is a lifelong journey and process. So grateful for this um, wisdom. It's not it's wisdom. It really is that you're imparting, Isla, and inviting us all to go and sit and be with the plants and be in relationship to them. Um, it's such a, a glorious, um, uh, you know, delightful invitation. So um, Linda, I just saw a chat there that said, where can they buy Weeds Heal from? Yes, we're going to tell them that, and Maria's going to go over all of that so if people would sit with us for a minute here let's um go ahead and um we'll turn it over to uh maria and isla thank you so much i always love being with you in the plants it's one of my favorite things in the world so thank you and uh, thanks for spending your time here with us this evening thanks for writing your books thanks for doing the, uh, this this time and, and the yeah and could, could I just say that yes. you know when you do this it's so easy in a, a fast track world it's so easy just to rush through something but believe me the richness and the layers of connection that come when you take the time is immeasurable. Mm. And in my, I'm now 74, in my 74 years, <coughs> gee, that's hard to get out. In my 74 <laughs> years, I would say mm. the last decade of working in this way has been the most precious. Mm. Thank you. And thank you for mm -hmm. doing that, taking that time, because it's something we all benefit from. And, and uh, Linda, do you want me to stay on for after or not? Well, for a few minutes, let Maria yeah. okay. turn it over to Maria and see if <laughs> anything else comes out. And then we're going to do the giveaway. You can stay or not. But let's go ahead yeah. and... And if people even want to open your mic and just say thank you to Isla. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Isla. We just thank really you, Isla. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, Isla. Thank you, Isla. Thank you. It was wonderful. Thank you, thank you so much. It was really good. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Isla. Thank you. Thank you and blessings. Yeah. Oh, it's so you. lovely hearing everyone's voice. I know. I really was <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for that. So thank you. Yeah. Big thank you, Susan. Love. You so much, love. Yeah. Much love. Yeah. That was amazing, wasn't it, ladies? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'm so thankful for Isla uh, joining us tonight and um and just for everything, for the such an amazing body of work and for sharing such a unique perspective in our crazy, busy, reductionist world and how to just slow down and just be present. And I think it's just such an important message and I'm very thankful for that. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna give away a book. Um, like Linda said, we um, she had Isla's beautiful book, Weeds Heal, printed here in the United States, first time ever. 
And we are carrying it at Linda's bookstore on Moonwise. And Jill has put that uh, link in the chat. And we will also be sending you a link in an email directly following uh, this call. And you will get a coupon code in that email for 10% off with free shipping. But that deal expires May 1st. So uh, don't don't wait. If you don't win tonight, don't wait to get over to Moonwise and grab Isla's book. So I am going to do my little shuffle here and I'm going to give away a book. Let's see. How about um, Elizabeth McGann? You want to unmute Elizabeth and let us know that you're here. You should still be here because I'm, I've am i grabbed your name. And so, Elizabeth, you've won the book. So please put your email in the chat so we can contact you. And if um, we don't see you in a second here, if you don't speak. Um, she time. messaged me. Oh, yeah, she did? She okay. Me. Okay, good. And I'm like, Just send me, my, uh, send me your email, Elizabeth. Perfect. Perfect. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yay. All right. So for the rest of you, follow the link that you, you've gotten from Jill or in the email that you're going to get directly after this call tonight. And you will um, have a direct link for 10% with a coupon code for 10% off on Weeds Heal and free shipping. So um, everybody wins. All right. So the next big announcement that we have is that we have a beautiful course with Isla. It's a four-part uh, um, course, course in therapeutic health for women um, that we are hosting on our Herb Women Classroom platform. And Isla did this class for us a few years ago, and um, it hasn't been available since. And we are just so excited about putting this together that... Uh, yeah, we've been working really hard on it. So we're going to give away that course tonight. And um, and I think Jill put the link to that in the chat as well. So let's go ahead and try to do this again. And we are, how about Susie Green? Susie Green, go ahead and uh, uh, connect with Jill directly and get her your email. And we will get you all the details on how to get registered for that. So for everyone else, we are offering uh, some pretty nice deals. Um, you will be getting a coupon code in the email for Isla's course. And we do have a graduated pricing tier. So we're having an early bird registration period. But on top of that, because you attended and you registered for this course tonight, for this conversation, you're getting an extra deal. So only, only those women who registered for this course will be getting that deal. And you'll be getting that coupon code tonight as well. And uh, the key, the 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 um, key to that though is that it only lasts. That coupon code is only good for a week, so we don't want you to miss out on this amazing opportunity. And um, there'll be some other little special goodies that we're going to throw into that course as well. So it's over 13 hours of content with Isla, and it's really special. And I think you're going to love it. Okay. So Linda, anything else? Oh, there's a Q&A. Linda, do you want to talk about the Q&A that, um, that they're going to get with Isla in January a little bit more? I know you mentioned it a little bit, but I think that's really Well, when amazing. you sign up for the course, the sooner you sign up, the better, because you'll actually meet with me every month up until January to answer questions. And then in January, we'll consolidate and we'll all meet with Isla and uh uh, you know, have the opportunity to ask her questions um, that we've um, developed over the co course of the months that we'll be studying the material. So it's super exciting and it's going to be a community experience because we'll get to talk about it and, um, you know, really chew over the material. And so I'm excited, really excited about it. So, yeah. 
It's an amazing opportunity to take a deep dive into this really beautiful, um, holistic perspective that is really unique in the world today. So don't miss out on this opportunity. It's really great. No. So we'd like to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Um, it was a great conversation. Thank you again to Isla uh, for sharing uh, the beautiful wisdom and insights of Dandelion. It's always a pleasure and a gift um, being able to sit with you and you know, Dandelion as a bonus. So um, we look forward to seeing all of you in the future at other Midwest Women's Herbal events. Uh, and thank you. Any last words, Linda? Just that one of our next community conversations will be with Catherine McLean in the summer. She's releasing her book on working with um, uh, psilocybin and grief and death and dying. So we're super excited about that. That'll be a precursor to our Mycelium Mysteries Conference, which will happen in the fall, our Mushroom Conference. So watch out for that. I hope you all come to that as well. And um, yeah, just open your mics and let's all say goodnight. Thanks for being here. Just great community energy and just love you all. Night, Thank you. 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 Thank you.